Hey everybody, what's up? Uh, hey, <laughs> what the hell was that? Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Um, as you can see, I am still somewhat new to this format. So, um, <laughs> if you've stumbled upon this video or you're interested in horror in any way, then please stay tuned. We're gonna be talking about this all season. It is officially spooky season. It is the first day of fall, and I'm gonna be spending between now and Halloween talking about horror exclusively on this channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Gregory Siegel. I am a filmmaker. I wanted to kick off this season by, you know, making it a little bit more general. And so we're actually going to be talking about um, overrated versus underrated films. I'm going to be taking a, a pair of movies and making them kind of go head to head with another based off of my, my opinion and the opinions of the research I've done on Reddit. So for example, let's say that we were comparing my movie, my upcoming film, Culture Geist, and I wanted to compare it to a movie that was something similar to it, like Searching or Unfriended. Speaking of my movie, Culturegeist will be available at some point in 2024 here on YouTube. That's what I do. I am a YouTube filmmaker. I try to make my art available to anybody and everybody. Go check out my trailer. It is there. Culturegeist. Check it out. You're going to love it. Okay, let's get back to this. So that's kind of what the format's going to kind of look like for this video. We're basically taking pairs of movies and comparing them. Um, and I'm, it, some of some of these opinions I agree with and some of them I don't. Like, some of them I came up with and some of them Reddit kind of came up with. Th this pair of films are about exorcisms. The overrated film in this category, um, I believe, and I think a, a lot of other people seem to on Reddit agree with this, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. The Exorcism of Emily Rose is not a bad movie. It's just not strong, in my opinion. I think... There are movies in this genre that are better. By early 2000s standards, I'd say that The Exorcism of Emily Rose was very strong, but it wasn't that great when we're holding it up to some other films in this category that are more recent. The Exorcism of Emily Rose was supposed to be based on the story that is actually truly gruesome and just really messed up. And I would have really liked if they actually focused on that because this felt very Hollywood. It felt very, it wasn't gritty. It wasn't. It didn't feel real. It felt. It felt fictional, even though it is based on the story that I'm actually quite familiar with. So the underrated counterpart for this particular film, in my opinion, um, and this, um, there were a few people who said this on Reddit, but this was my first thought initially. So I'm glad other people agreed with me. Is the taking of Deborah Logan? The taking of Deborah Logan is a very, very good film, and not enough people talk about it. I have been over the exorcism genre for a very long time. And, and even back when this movie came out, I was still over it. So I didn't want to see this movie, but I'm glad I did. The concept of a documentary filmmaker trying to make a film about um, dementia and following this elderly woman around who's, who's struggling with this, and then it starts, things start to develop and you start to realize, is this really dementia? Is this demonic possession? Like what's really happening? And the payoff is great. It has one of the most shocking moments. If you haven't seen this movie and you want to see it, um, don't watch this next image because I want you to be as shocked by it when you watch it as I was. This image. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. When that happened, I was like, what in the hell? And, you know, I... It was just especially like for its time like we see really shocking horror lately of doing some really interesting things and weird special effects but i did not see that coming so the next category we're going to be talking about are creature features now the overrated film in this category i don't know if i would consider it a creature feature or a ghost story it's kind of both considering guillermo del toro kind of <laughs> bridges that gap sometimes so the first the the overrated film in this category is mama um this is something that is heavily talked about on Reddit. People say that Mama is very overrated. I don't agree with that. I would actually say it's fairly rated. It's evenly rated. I wouldn't say it's under or over. Um, I'd say that the movie was very decent. The short film that it's based off of, though, is phenomenal and is one of the best horror shorts I've ever seen. This one, the movie, though, the full-length feature, um, had its moments for sure, and I really love the special effects. I just love Guillermo del Toro's style. 
um, the way that he his creatures are, like the way that he, and the way they move is just really. It was very unique, and I still enjoy this movie. I still watch this movie. Um, so I wouldn't say it's overrated, but I can understand why people think that because the ending was not good. <laughs> the ending, there there were some tonal shifts in there, and then. Ooh, I'm just gonna turn into butterflies. I, I don't know, it was, it was just, you know, whatever. The underrated counterpart to this, and like I said, I wouldn't consider Mama a creature feature, but I also wouldn't consider this movie a creature feature. I don't really know what to call this category, but I would say that the underrated movie for this pair is The Descent. When looking on Reddit and seeing people who didn't like Mama, but also looking at the movies that they did recommend, the Descent came up a lot. 2004, 2005 was the year that I was allowed to start watching horror movies when I was growing up. It was very subversive for me at the time. I was a teenager when I first watched it. And just the concept of these humans that got trapped in this cave and eventually, uh, you know, procreated and evolved to turn into these creatures um, that move really fast. They're almost like bat people. When these women get trapped in this cave and now they're, they're basically at odds with these creatures. And it, it's just really good. I really enjoyed it. it. It had a really cool style. My sister who's watching, it's one of her favorite films, um, horror films. Um, and one of her favorite films is actually in this next category too. So, <laughs> hey sis. So the overrated film in this category that I'm gonna be talking about, and we're talking about home invasion horror at this point right now. The first movie is Don't Breathe. I feel that this is a very strong movie. It was in the high ratings as well, but I do feel it's overrated because I don't feel like it really offered anything new. Okay. Don't come for me. The concept was unique and fresh, but I don't, when I remember watching it thinking that I was going to really find something new, but a lot of the scares and a lot of the, just the tonality and the pacing of the film felt very reductive to other films of its genre. It's not doing anything structurally that really changes the game. Yeah, the story is unique here, but I, this isn't the, the other movie by the way, but I'm just mentioning, honorable mention to the film Hush, which I felt did it better. It was a woman who's deaf and, you know, the guy comes in and, you know, she's having to rely on her skills as an author to try to use deductive reasoning to get out of the situation. Really cool camera angles, really cool, like, you know, to, almost like choose your own adventure. I thought that that was a much better movie, but that's not the film that I chose to compare it to. The film that we're actually going to talk about that is, in my opinion, underrated in this subgenre is The Strangers. The Strangers did not do well by the critics. So Don't Breathe has an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, while The Strangers has a 49. So clearly the critics disagree with me here. Um, now this Don't Breathe and The Strangers comparison is not one I found on Reddit. This is actually my opinion. and. Um, Films from the subgenre that I think are overrated versus underrated, and these are the two I think of. The Strangers, to me, for its time, was a game changer in the sense that they had a very minimal score, sometimes no score at all. And this was the era you have to bear in mind where films would rely on their scores for tension, for using that music to build and build and build and leading to a payoff. And they would even trick you with it and, you know, in these films. Like they would build and build and build and then they would, there would be nothing and you'd be like, oh, okay. And then they turn around and then the thing would jump. And, you'd, and then you'd jump and you'd get scared, but jump scares, people were already over the jump scares when this movie came out. So they're like, well, we still want people to jump, but how are we going to do it in a way that's fresh and unique? Oh, how about we just don't give them any warning? We don't do a score tension build, and we also don't do a jump scare um, sound effect. Let's just do neither of those things. And so basically what you do is you just have like this woman standing in her kitchen, and then you just have like the, the home invader, the invader, walking past the hallway with no warning, but you can see it. She can't, and it's terrifying. I do not know why this movie gets so much hate. I think it is a fantastic film and it really did do something different with its particular format and it broke the formula. And I love films that break the formula. The next category is we're going on, we're going a little bit on the campy rock opera route. <laughs> 
Um, don't come for me. The overrated film on this, I'm going to say, is Rocky Horror Picture Show. I love Rocky Horror Picture Show, um, but it is overrated. I think there was a time period where this movie was the underdog. This movie was underrated, but it has become such a huge pop culture phenomenon that people don't even realize that this movie had a sequel that I actually like more. That film is called Shock Treatment. Shock Treatment, I didn't even know it existed until one of my actors, who's a good friend of mine, um, he plays Elliot Martin in Culture Guys, the guy that the mystery revolves around. Um, so we, when we go, he lives like five minutes from me. We go over to his house all the time and he was like, did you not know that Rocky Horror Picture Show had a sequel? I was like, no. I love the music. I love the concept of it is so bizarre. So like the whole thing is set on like this really weird twisted game show format where, you know, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this movie. The music is great. The music is better, in my opinion. I love the songs in this movie. I love that they utilize advertisements and consumerism and, and things. It's, it's literally something I would come up with. This is something I would make. It's so subversive and strange and it's just i love it <clears throat> and i think that it has it's more nuanced than rocky horror picture show there are things about it that really kind of uh, challenge the way that movies should be made and i know rocky horror picture show did that too but i think that shock treatment does it even more um Huge fan, huge fan of Shock Treatment. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It is definitely underrated. So many people don't even know this movie exists. A lot of people who are like avid Rocky Horror Picture fans probably dislike this movie because they're aware of all the problems that it took to get this movie made. I like it more because it speaks to me more as an artist. It's more like something I would write and I, I really respond well to things like that personally. All right, so the next one, um, this is also a Reddit. This is a Reddit one that I kind of disagree with. And so th we're changing gears here. The overrated movie in this category is Paranormal Activity. Paranormal Activity is not overrated. It is highly rated justifiably. The ratings match the quality here. And, you know, there have been some sequels in the, you know, in this franchise that are questionable. Some are better than others. But I think it's safe to say that Paranormal Activity was a phenomenon and it was a game changer. And it really brought that, you know, found footage style back into the mainstream. No, I do not agree that Paranormal Activity is overrated. Um, but for those on Reddit who did feel that Paranormal Activity was overrated, they chose Grave Encounters as their alternative. Now, Grave Encounters is good. Um, there are some really shocking moments. I liked both films, actually, Grave Encounters and Grave Encounters 2. The, the concept follows kind of like a team of ghost hunter, ghost adventure. Oh, yeah, you know the, the show Ghost Adventures? Um, it's kind of like that style, but like things really fly off the charts and go crazy. I can understand why people who might be put off by slower burns um, would appreciate Grave Encounters because it is a little bit more apeshit and there is more going on. Me personally, I, I really like the minimalism of paranormal activity. All right, so in the next category we have is um, anthologies, actually. VHS as an overrated. I would agree with that. Uh, now that's not to say that it's bad. And there's, it's also a whole franchise. There are some segments within this you know, anthology series, some are better than others. Um, there are better ones out there. Like, I really love the ABCs of Death um, and, you know, some of these other anthologies that had come out. But I would say that the most underrated anthology horror film um, that just takes a collection of shorts is going to be Southbound. Southbound was really... Uh, I don't hear enough people talking about Southbound. It, it did this really good job at creating a connective tissue between the films that you see. And there would be these camera angles, right? Where you would see these ghostly alien type creatures that would be like in the background and you'd have to really look for them. And it would really connect these short films together. And it did it in such a unique way where it was actually really terrifying. It was scary. Like I remember like, I don't get scared easily. It is so good. That also wasn't a fart by the way. That was my, my, that was my foot moving. 
on that. Okay, you know what? So what if I did? The last category that we're gonna talk about is actually interesting because this is another one that I totally disagree with. And I actually love both of these films for vastly different reasons. So the overrated film that that Reddit unanimously said was the most overrated horror film in recent times was Hereditary. If anything, this movie's vastly underrated because yes, you know, people are talking about it, but a lot of people didn't enjoy it. And, and I think that it is unjustifiably hated. It, it was very intellectual and it was very artistic and very metaphorical talking about mental health problems being hereditary, but also this particular possession, what's really being passed down here? Is it the demon or is it mental illness? And is it both? And is one creating a commentary about the other? And there's like, there's so many things to unpack and it could be very, it could be very grueling at times. It has one of the most <sighs> shocking scenes I've ever seen in a horror movie, and to this day, that scene still affects me, and I think we all know what we're talking about here. Yeah, and it's not even that scene, really, that did it. It was Tony Collette's acting and response to it. I get everybody has their own opinions, but this is a movie that's just, like, objectively shocking, and it's, you know, but I guess that can create a subjective nature, too. Do people like films that are that shocking? Do people like films that are that nuanced? Not everyone does. Whatever. It's fine. On Reddit, when people talked about movies that they felt were similar to Hereditary, to Hereditary in terms of ape shitness and tone, um, Mother comes up by Darren Aronofsky. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am a huge, huge Darren Aronofsky fan. I was talking about Oppenheimer being Christopher Nolan's magnum opus. I feel like that is what Requiem for a Dream is for Darren Aronofsky. But I will say that Mother came close. Mother was one of my favorite films of his in a very long time. It was kind of a return to form, very experimental, and had a lot to say. Um, I don't, I can't, I don't really want to give away what makes this movie so insane. Mother is basically, I'll, I can try to give you a little bit, you know, it's a young couple, they move into this house, and then there's like this other older couple starts to come in and starts spending an, a, a, a questionably strange amount of time there, and then more people start coming into the house, and then more people start coming into the house, and then things just fly off the wall in a completely bizarre way, <laughs> leading to you know, Hereditary has a really shocking scene. This has a really shocking scene. Uh, and what the hell? <laughs> uh, it involves a baby. Yeah, I just, I love that it doesn't hold back on its intentions. Both of these films don't hold back on their intentions and that's why I think they are near the same level. I can understand why people can compare these movies. I feel like some people might think Hereditary was too nuanced some people might think that mother wasn't nuanced enough and it might even be vice versa for another crowd and it, it, that's the thing about modern horror is that there's a lot of room for discussion about what the intentions of these films are this brings up a really good question does a movie fail if it doesn't follow on its intended purpose for its audience. You know, the director could have his own intention for making it, but us as viewers, we draw our own conclusions. You could have five people in a room watch the same movie and get a completely different breakdown of what they felt the movie meant. And I think that is what cinema is all about. And if we're talking about two movies that that deliver on creating various types of discourse within different horror communities, Hereditary and Mother definitely does that for sure. So to close this video out, we're gonna do something that's different from the other films we talked about. This is not a pair of films that we're gonna be comparing. I'm literally just going to give you two different films. One that I feel is the most overrated horror film I've ever seen, and then the most underrated horror movie I've ever seen. So we're gonna start with The Witch. Highly, highly rated and I just don't understand why. I don't feel like anything is actually happening in this movie. And don't get me wrong, I love a slow burn, right? I love a slow burn, but there has to be a payoff. 
And I really did enjoy that last scene with the goat and stuff, but there was no, nothing else. I, I just felt it was so, and maybe that's just me. Maybe there's something I'm missing and there's something that I'm not understanding. If you enjoyed this movie, please give me your thoughts and opinions. I'd love to understand why so many people like this movie. My husband and I are, avid, are both avid horror fans and neither of us liked it. So the movie got like a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was made by Robert Eggers. And, and the thing is, I just don't, usually with a slow burn, in my opinion, when you want to build up into something, you want to build up into something high octane and intense or something that, that provides a shock or some kind of reveal or something that like makes the slowness of the first acts of the film notably um, important. Like almost like, ooh, that was rough to get through, but it all makes sense now because of what it led to. And The Witch left me with major, major blue balls. Um, I will say that I think it might just be Robert Eggers' style maybe, because I've seen some of his other films and I don't particularly enjoy them either. <laughs> um, the Lighthouse. But maybe I'm just not as pretentious now as I used to be. Like, I mean, maybe I would have eaten this movie up when I was 19, 20 years old. But I'm in my 30s now and I just don't think I have the patience for that. I don't have the patience for these kinds of movies anymore. I'm excited to see though that he is going to be working on the Nosferatu movie because I think that that story would really match his style really well. So the thing is, I'm gonna watch every single one of his movies and I don't really necessarily respond well to his style, but I think he's extremely talented. Um, people clearly respond really well to his work. Um, and maybe one day I'll like his work. Um, but I, based off the things I've seen right now, I just don't respond to the things that he creates. And that's okay. Um, it's not for everybody, right? The most underrated horror movie that I have seen in recent times has got to be Malignant. That movie. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> James Wan is just, he's, he's just on a whole other level. Um, and, and he's been cracking out some great, great stuff um, in his in his career in general, but but more so lately, like some really innovative stuff. So *Malignant* didn't do particularly bad with the critics. It it got a 76 percent, um, so not as high as *The Witch*, obviously, but still pretty decently high. And I think that the critics seemed to enjoy it pretty well because it knew what it was trying to do. I don't think the audience necessarily got it. I see a lot of people enjoy it, and I think that just based on how the movie was made and the response that it had from critics and fans alike, leads me to believe that this is going to be a huge cult classic. I already kind of feel like it's already becoming that. Like, it's already halfway there to cult status at this point. And I think within the next 10 to 15 years, people are gonna look back on this movie as one of the best cult classics and horror of its generation. The movie itself is incredibly bizarre. Such the weirdest twist I have seen in years um, that I'm obviously not going to explain, but it's like the movie starts as like this weird, campy, self-aware horror, and then it gets to be a little bit more subdued in its process, and you're like, okay, maybe this is gonna die down to something more normal and find a good spot to sit for a while, and then all of a sudden it turns into like Kill Bill. <laughs> it becomes, uh, and then it, it then it turns into like an Assassin's Creed video game and then like if you were to put a bunch of weird 80s body horror films into a blender and then just put it on a plate and bake it at 350 and be like here you go fans uh, of horror eat this I promise you're not gonna your head's not gonna explode and fall out all over the floor or anything but here enjoy this is the most bizarre experience. I, I wish, I wish I could have seen this in theaters. We weren't prepared for what we were about to watch. Now in hindsight, we're like, man, that would have been so cool to see in theaters. We missed out and we did. We missed out. All right, I apologize y'all for this video is probably like all over the place because you know, we have pairs of movies that don't really have any clear cut criteria and we're just kind of, you know, it's just a conversation. At the end of the day, that's what my videos tend to be. Yeah, I mean, I just, I have so many different ideas that I have for this spooky season. So if you're into that, subscribe and uh, you know, all that stuff. Again, Coltergeist, 
check it out. The, the trailer is out on my channel. Please click the link and watch it if you haven't already. It is going to be such a fun experience when this movie comes out and I want y'all to be able to, to be the first to, to experience this on my YouTube channel before, before it blows up, before I start sending it to film festivals. I want everybody to be able to see it here on this channel. Um, before that happens. Um, so we're, we're planning on getting that out at the beginning of next year. So have a great one, guys. I'll see you in the next video. I'll see you next week when we talk about more horror-related topics. All right, peace out.